in hospital. This afternoon, or around three, she will be remembered at the Albertina Sassoulu Centre in the Mpering Street in Izimklope, Soweto. In that condolence statement to the family last week, the African National Congress in Gauteng remembered the key role that Mama Motoledi played in the struggle in the 60s to ensure freedom and democracy in South Africa. We usually have him in the studio in his capacity as Minister of Health, but today he joins us to help us connect the dots as a family member. Minister, good morning and welcome. Good morning, Sam, and good morning to the viewers out there. Uh, it's on a very somber note. Our condolences to your family and compliments of the season and Happy New Year, all of that wrapped into one. But how is the family doing? It must have been an incredible blow. Well, uh, it is in that there's no family that will ex easily accept death, even though we know at some stage or the other we're going to pass on. Mary Caroline was already 20, I mean 87 years old mm. uh, because she was born in 1927, but we still wanted to be with her. Mm. So like any other family that has had a loss, we are feeling the loss and we are in grief. Um, Minister, for those that really don't understand uh, Mama Motsu Lady's role in the struggle, and, and I think as we move throughout the course of the day, we'll hear more about those kind of stories and how important role she played. But can you highlight just a little bit of, of her history for us? Yeah, no, I, I think that's a good question. Because I've been reading some newspapers, especially from Sapa, they emphasize the fact that she was a wife of a stalwart, of mm. a Rivonia trialist yes. who went to Robben Island, Island with Nelson Mandela. Uh, Elias Mutualeli, and, and I was saying, but in her own right, she was also a revolutionary. She, she played a very prominent role. Look, she, it's true that she was uh, recruited into the struggle by her husband, Elias Mutualeli, after they got married in 1948. Uh, Elias Mutualeli was a very staunch member of the South African Communist Party as well as ANC. But in those early days, he was more involved in the Communist Party. He conducted uh, political classes, you know, during the night, which Mac Caroline was attending. So she became a revolutionary in her own right. She participated in the 1956 march. You remember the mm. march led by Mel Lillian Goy, Helen yes. Joseph. Yes, she was part of that march against the past laws in 1956. She did participate in the underground structures of the MK in that she was transporting explosives between Johannesburg and Pretoria underground. And uh, she was a member of FETRO, mm. Federation of Transfer Women, and a member of the ANC Women's League. She worked with people like Winnie Madigzela Mandela, May Winnie Madigzela Mandela, and May Albertina Sulu, and many others. And uh, she was arrested during the Rivonia trial and held for six months under solitary confinement without any trial. In fact, when the husband was sentenced to Robben Island, she was already in jail. She didn't even, because she was caught when uh, the trial was on, uh, right inside the courtroom, and, and sent for solitary confinement for six months. And then when she came out, the husband was already on Robben Island. Minister, I'm glad that you mentioned the 1956 march, and we know that in the next coming months, um, at the uh, Madiba Remembrance Walk that was held in the early part of December, um, we talked about the, uh, the 1956 march and women that were integral part in that uh, march, that there would be some kind of monument erected. But I do feel that a lot of our history is lost. And a lot of the younger generation won't hear of, unless we have people like yourselves transferring that knowledge of Mama Matsoledi, that a lot of people up to this point might have never known of her. How do we make sure that our history remains uh, an integral part of our daily lives and that it stays relevant in our consciousness? Well, I, I believe my, our history must be taught in, in schools. You know, during our time, mine and your time, you know, we used to learn a lot about Jan van Riebeck and, mm. you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but we need to be taught our own history, the real history of the struggle for liberation in South Africa. Because we can't talk about uh, 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 South Africa without mentioning the liberation struggle that brought democracy, which the whole world is talking about. I think that is the starting point. But I also believe as parents must also uh, play our role. Sometimes we assume that what we know, our children also knows when, when they never went through it. And, and when they behave differently, we get very surprised. I do sit with my own children and talk about what I think are simple 
sets of history and sometimes they get very surprised mm. and uh, one day they told me that history is so boring but you make it very interesting <laughs> and i said what's happening they said no at school that's not how they put it because i was giving them the real history of what we went through mm. in 1976 in the 80s the rivonia trial etc etc but so let's talk about your own the personal impact growing up with um people like um, Elias Mutsoledi and having Mama Mutsoledi as part of, how has that shaped your uh, political consciousness and how has it shaped your, your personal growth? Well, a lot. Remember uh, uh, that Elias Mutsoledi left uh, the, the rural areas of Skukwineland in Pokwan where we stay in the 1940s uh, after passing standard six. He had to come and work. He did pass standard six in a distinction, but he had to come and work because he didn't have any money to continue. So, in a way, when I, I was born, uh, because I was only born 18 months later, uh, I mean 18 years later, I mean to say, mm. uh, he was already gone. So I only knew him in the 70s when I was already visiting Soweto, doing Standard 5 and meeting them. And of course, uh, I mean, and, and, sorry, and, and meeting Mac Caroline because the old man was already on Robben Island. So I just heard of him as a legend, mm. or rather the way they put it to us as a, a communist terrorist. <laughs> who has been caught to us on, on Robben Island. But I was very curious to understand what is this communist, what is this terrorist, why did he go to the island? And I went on to try and find more facts. And of course, the, the facts made me realize I also need to play a role in the struggle for liberation. And, and, and you personally never went to Robben Island to, to sit no, down with your no. To sit down with? To sit down with your, your uncle Ellis? No, no, I did. <laughs> Mm. During visits, remember they were allowing 12 visits per annum. Unfortunately, Mac Caroline had to share the visits with the rest of the family members, and they did allow whenever, whenever somebody wanted to visit. Uh, Tell me about her, her personality and, and, and how strong she must have been to, to, you know, with her husband being arrested, or dealing with absolutely everything she had to go through. She's described as somebody who's had an incredible sense of humor. Well, she was, are you talking about McCaroline or Ray? Yeah, I'm uh, talking about, uh, yeah, McCaroline. Yes, McCaroline, look, she went through hardships. Let, let's not make a mistake about that. Firstly, I've just mentioned that mm. she was caught while in court to listen to the trial of the Rivonia trialist in which her husband was an accused. Sent for that six months with in solidary confinement when she got out, her husband, husband was, gone. was gone. Yeah. And uh, from then on, she had to live with the children and, 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 and they have to grow up. But it's clear that she was not sitting, just sitting. She infused some revolutionary morality in them. Because in 1975, her second born child left the country to join MK. That was in 1975. In 1976, during the uprises in 1976, her fifth born child also left to join the MK. In 1981, her sixth-born child passed on. Uh, I mean, a fifth-born child passed on uh, 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 through illness, and she had to bear the grief alone because the husband was not there. Mm. And the, the, the third child who left the country left in 1982. So she had family yes. members leaving, family members dying, the husband on Robben Island. So this, these are the hardships she had to endure. But she endured them with dignity, and she carried on. She never looked back. Lisa, what, what is her legacy? What is the, 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 the profound thing that we as uh, African South Africans should remember about um, uh, Mama Motoledi? Well, she, she in her own right was a liberation fighter. She was not only a wife of a, an icon or one of the Rivonia trialists. She herself participated and made sure that the liberation we are enjoying today, she participated to deliver it. That's how we need to remember her. For anybody at home who wants to know a little bit more about the memorial details today, if you can just share them with us very quickly. Yes, the memorial service is going to be held at 3 o'clock this afternoon today at Albertina Sisulu Hall in Mzimklope. And the funeral service uh, will be held at the community center in, in community hall in Orlando East on Saturday the 3rd, two days after New Year. But today we are holding the memorial service at 3 o'clock. 
Minister, we're going to leave it there. But thank you very much for joining us. And our condolences go, to, go out to you and your family. Uh, of course, Minister Aram Mitsaledi joining us here in the studio to talk about uh, somebody uh, who has been a pivotal part of our history and our liberation struggle, uh, Mama Mitsaledi, Caroline Mitsaledi. Of course, the memorial service will be happening at the Albert uh, Tina Sulu Center in Mopering Street in Mton Klope, Soweto. And uh, you can share your thoughts. Morning Live at SABC. That's here. That's it.